Okay. So, I guess uh, this video is going to be about um, why people, uh, both gamers and professional reviewers, tend to minimize the importance of graphics a lot. Um, now I've been gaming since I was probably four or maybe even three years old. Um, and uh, I've, like, all throughout my life, um, people have minimized the importance of graphics uh, quite a bit. And there was a mantra that uh, the most important thing to a video game is the gameplay, not the graphics. And this was a mantra that I used to repeat myself. Um, but now I am here to challenge those preconceptions that we have held for a long time. I'm going to challenge that notion that gameplay is, in fact, you know, the king of video games and it's the only thing that matters, or gra graphics don't matter in some way. Um, so some other people have made videos about the importance of graphics and why they matter. And those are good videos. But I think it's more, it's equally as important to analyze why people say graphics don't matter. And when you think about it, it kind of is a counterintuitive thing. Uh, because, you know, when we play video games, it's a visual medium. We see it. So why on earth would anyone ever minimize the importance of a visual medium? After all, um, when we're talking about art, <laughs> we never uh, minimize the importance of the visual medium there. So why do we do it with video games? Uh, well, I think there are two kind of major broad reasons for why this happens with video games. Um, and one, the major reason is the one I, I want to touch on first. Um, and it began in the 90s, like, kind of like the mid-90s is when this kind of mantra of gameplay over graphics really began. Because before then, people weren't saying that graphics didn't matter. So you gotta wonder, why was it in the mid-90s did this kind of start to take hold and people started to just like kind of repeat this over and over again? Well, in the mid-90s, what happened? So we were seeing kind of a culture shock, a revolution in technology. Um, video games were rapidly advancing in 3D graphics. 3D graphics um, were not technically new in the mid-90s. However, in the mid-90s, that's when 3D graphics started to actually become a practical medium to make video games with. And it added a new dimension which was a new experience, a new thing, and hey, we live in a three-dimensional world, so everyone was clamoring for it. It's new, it's futuristic. Um, this is what we want to see. So what you were seeing was um, a meeting of the mind, so to speak. You were seeing the best of 2D, right? So remember, in the mid-90s, like, um, you know, 2D games had finally, like, matured. Before then, you know, they were still growing up. You know, the 8-bit era um, was uh, far outclassed by the 16-bit era. The best games of all time, some of the best games of all time, were released during this time period where you had, um, you know, great, fantastic games like Super Metroid and Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff like that. So, like, the absolute best of 2D uh, had come out. So the best of 2D was going up against the worst of 3D, right? Because early 3D is always going to be necessarily uh, more primitive. Um, and this kind of introduced a bit of a conundrum that people were demanding for 3D, but a lot of those 3D games that were coming out were not very good. Um, you know, if you look at some early fighting games, you know, at the time, you know, some people liked them. 
um, or I, sh I shouldn't even say some people like them. Like obviously everyone was clamoring for you know, 3D fighting games like Virtual Fighter and stuff like that. Um, and then they were going up against like 2D fighting games like Street Fighter 3. Um, and uh, there's this guy on YouTube named Top Hat Gaming who you know, documents the history of what happened very well. And uh, a lot of people kind of forget or don't know today about uh, how poorly received Street Fighter 3 was at the time. Um, and perhaps unfairly, I mean, you know, it, it did eventually mature and get better with the revisions, but uh, a lot of those early reviews criticized Street Fighter 3 um, for not being 3D. And this was perhaps an unfair criticism. Um, and so this is indicative. Street Fighter 3 is indicative of like a pattern uh, that we were observing in the mid 90s where people were demanding for inferior 3D games um, at the expense of higher quality 2D games. And some, some newer 2D games uh, were not treated fairly. People recognized this. Some people recognized this, that this was not right. Um, <clears throat> and so their response to this unfairness, that some really high quality 2D games were being unfairly criticized, was to say, hey, graphics don't matter, gameplay matters. And while the spirit of what they were saying was true, in that uh, the graphics, really, you know, the, what we're talking about here is like 3D graphics. You know, not everything needs to be in 3D. In fact, some things can be better in 2D. And Street Fighter 3, I think, exemplifies that point quite well. Especially when you look at fighting games today. Most fighting games today are actually 2D. Um, they use a 2D gameplay style. They might still use 3D graphics, but they still use a 2D style. Because it turns out that a lot of people prefer that over the 3D gameplay. Um, especially when you look at uh, 3D fighting games back then, they were really, really inferior. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of those early 3D fighting games just do not stand the test of time. However, Street Fighter 3 did, and that's the point, you know, is that history has looked far more fondly on a game that was unfairly maligned at the time, just because it wasn't 3D. And so, like I said, um, you know, there was this mantra, this, this new push to get people to not uh, value graphics as much as the gameplay and, and, and value the, the gameplay over the graphics. Um, but the problem is how they phrased it. You see, it wasn't, it wasn't that graphics don't matter. It's that not everything needed to be in 3D. That's actually what they should have said. Um, and what, how the mantra should have went. Uh, because graphics still mattered a lot. In fact, when you look at a game like Street Fighter 3, that game has excellent graphics. In fact, those graphics hold up much better over time than, uh, you know, the graphics like Virtual Fighter or Battle Arena to Shinden. You know, those graphics have aged very poorly in comparison. Um, so that was the, the, the main issue, you know, and that's where the mantra really began and how people kind of... Uh, you know, shifted you know, their their ideology and uh, start saying things like you know, graphics don't matter, gameplay matters. When what they really should have said is not everything needs to be in 3D. Okay, so that's one of the main reasons for why there's this like uh, this push for saying why, or I should say, why people uh, denigrated the importance of graphics contrary to what you would intuitively believe about a visual medium. Um, the other reason is um, that, uh, you know, little kids are kind of the problem in that uh, they will sometimes write off a game because they don't like the graphics. They'll say, ew, those graphics are ugly. This, this is a bad game. I don't want to play it. This looks sucky. This game looks sucky. Even if the game is a classic, amazing game, they'll write it off just because they don't like the way the graphics look. And that is wrong. Um, so that's different 
okay? Um, what they're doing is actually judging a book by its cover. So that doesn't mean that graphics don't matter. It means that they aren't giving the game a chance, and that not all games need to have, be a particular s style or look a particular way. Not all games need to look like Fortnite. Uh, not all games need to be like Call of Duty. You know, that was very popular in the past. Now it's Fortnite. You know, it's like little kids kind of turn everything toxic, unfortunately. You know, video games is one of those mediums where you have... where both adults and kids enjoy it. And so, like, since you're dealing with dumb kids, they kind of pollute everything with their dumb, bad opinions. Um, but the, the wrong response is to repeat this false mantra that graphics don't matter, which is not true. What they really should be saying in this particular instance is that don't judge a book by its cover. That's what you really should be saying. Um, now, I know some of the objections people are going to be saying. Right? They're going to be saying things like, um, well, I played games that have great graphics. Um, and they were terrible. Believe me, that has happened to me many times. And the opposite's also true, where I've played games that don't have good graphics, um, but are great games. But believe it or not, that actually happens far less often. You know, if you look at a game like this, for example, you know, some dumb person might say this game has bad graphics. This game does not have bad graphics. This game, Streets of Rage 1, has great graphics. Um, so, in my opinion, you know, that the, the opposite of where, you know, you have a good game that has bad graphics, that, that doesn't happen very often. More often is, um, you know, a game that has really good graphics is actually bad. Um, but you gotta keep in mind that just because those are realities, that doesn't mean my point is wrong. That does not mean that graphics don't matter. And it doesn't mean that we should be minimizing the importance of graphics. Graphics still matter. They're still very important. Um, I also want to touch on another point in that how video games have changed. So, before I said, you know, the mantra that these people would say is that, you know, graphics don't matter, gameplay matters. Um, another reason for why that was a popular thing to say in the mid-90s is because video games back then were more gameplay-centric. Um, today, that is not really true. You know, games can come in a lot of different kind of, like, forms. Um, and... You know, <clears throat> some games are not uh, gameplay focused. They're not really all about the gameplay, and that may not even be the most important part of the game. Um, you know, let's, let's take kind of like an extreme example. A game like, for example, uh, like Detroit Beyond Human, or a similar kind of game, you know, like Heavy Rain and all those other kinds of games. These are, these are games that are more based around, like, an experience, um, and where the story is actually at the forefront, and are much, much more important. And, like, there's other mechanics, like, being able to, you know, have choice, and that'll affect the way the story progresses and stuff like that. You know, when you look at the actual gameplay for the, a game like that, you know, what are you doing? Like, you're controlling a character and moving it around and making decisions and stuff like that. Like, they're, like the gameplay is not really... Uh, the most important part of that kind of game. Um, and there are many other games like this too, so it's just to say that games have changed. You know, like when you're looking at a game like this, like Streets of Rage, back in the 16-bit era, you know, these were the most common kinds of games. The games since this era have changed dramatically, and there are lots of different ways to experience and enjoy video games. And so to kind of just like, you know, paint them all in the same, uh, paint them with a broad brush, and say they're all a particular way, and they all need to emphasize this is, I, I feel, you know, dated. You know, that's, it's not the reality anymore. There are some games where there are other mechanics that are far, far more important than the gameplay. Gameplay may not even be a consideration in, in the absolute sense. So, I feel it's dated. <clears throat> There's some games that where the gameplay is extremely important. But I also want to point out, you can't have gameplay without graphics. So this is another thing that I, I emphasize, is that gameplay and graphics are two sides of the same coin. You cannot have gameplay without graphics. You see this game I'm playing right now, Streets of Rage? If the 
there were no graphics, you wouldn't have gameplay. So, is gameplay important in a game like this? Yeah, absolutely, but the graphics are equally as important. Maybe, in some ways, more important. Um, you know, especially when you're talking about like a beat-em-up, where the gameplay is a repetitive thing that you're just doing the same thing over and over again. There needs to be something else to kind of um, make the game feel, uh, you know, diverse in terms of the, the, the visual experience. You know, like, you'll notice, like, even though I'm doing the same thing over and over again, you know, I'm just, like, mashing a button and, and clobbering these guys, what changes is the background. And you might say, oh, that's trivial. It's not trivial. It's a major component of the game. It's a visual, because we're visual creatures, and we need visual variety, otherwise things are going to feel boring and dull. Right, and that's one of the reasons why Streets of Rage was so successful. All of them, all three of them. Whereas a game series like Final Fight 2, which I recently just played, is so boring, because the graphics are just not that good. And in a beat-em-up, graphics are extremely important when you're doing a repetitive action over and over again. There needs to be something else to, uh, to offer variety. I'll also um, point out a double standard that we observe, in that people laud the importance of sound, music in particular. Um, for whatever reason, they constantly denigrate the importance of graphics. Um, like, uh, Streets of Rage is a pretty good example of that. We talk so much about how great the music is, and it is great, and the music is very important. But I, I got news for you guys. It's not as important as the graphics. Just being honest, the music is not as important as the graphics. The graphics are more important, far more important. So why do people do this? Why do people have no problem lauding something as relatively trivial as the music, but denigrate something far more important like the graphics. N my guess is that it's just more politically correct to do it, because people don't, u like little kids in particular, don't usually laud you know, the music and say, oh, that I don't want to play that game because the music's bad. Like, no one ever says that. So since no one's making these dumb arguments, it's more politically correct to, uh, to laud those uh, uh, aspects of the game even though they're not as important. And they aren't. They aren't as important. So yeah. Um, I think that pretty much touches on, you know, all the main components. There might be a few things that I forgot or missed. Um, but, uh, you know, it re like, really the most important thing I wanted to, to touch on are the reasons for why people minimize the importance of graphics. Um, and to make people kind of just rethink graphics and their role in video games and how we can make better arguments, you know, and, and that's really my, like, my objective here, is let's make better arguments and critique media more fairly. Like, when we look at art, and that's another big thing, you know, video games as art. We need to look at video games as art, and we can't dismiss or minimize any one thing. Like, when we're talking about art, the aesthetics and the, the impact those aesthetics have on our experience are absolutely important. You know, without the visual medium, you don't have visual art, right? A painting without a visual medium, you don't have anything. And similarly with a video game. It's the same deal, right? Unless you're playing a text game. But that's not what we're talking about in this context. We are talking about an art form. And in order to properly criticize art, that's something that we need to do. And that's another reason for why, you know, like how video games have changed. Is that like in the past, you know, video games weren't really thought of as art. You know, they were really thought as like a child's medium. But now video games have obviously changed a lot since those days. Um, and many video games today absolutely can be considered as art. So let's let's make better arguments in the future and not minimize the importance of graphics while lauding, lauding things that are not as important. 
like the music. And that's it. <laughs>